Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. <laughs> and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Well, just before we consider what the ascension might mean, let's have a look at what the disciples had been up to. Just six weeks before, a short time, they had been preparing to celebrate the Passover with Jesus. It had gone swimmingly well until Jesus decided to turn it all on its head. First, he got down on his knees and washed their feet, something usually done by a slave or a servant, certainly not by the gang leader. And they must do the same for others. Staggering, shocking even. Then Jesus took bread and blessed it, as is the Jewish custom. But then he broke it and gave it to them with the words, This is my body given for you. He did the same with a cup of wine, giving to them, saying, This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Words that have established a love feast, celebrating the death and resurrection of Jesus, inviting us to do this in remembrance of him and summed up in the acclamation, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Earth-shattering stuff. Just as they all thought it could not get any worse, <laughs> it did. Jesus is betrayed and arrested. He is mocked, beaten and tried in what can only be described as a kangaroo court and condemned to death for simply being himself and a thorn in the side of the religious authorities. Was this weakness on the part of Pilate or political expediency? Who knows? The truth is that Jesus, the Son of God, is nailed to a cross like a common criminal and left to die the most horrific death. But hang on a minute. There is a new headline. He is risen. The tomb is empty. Jesus has appeared again alive and well, first to Mary and then to the two on the Emmaus Road and the disciples in the upper room. He's had breakfast on the shores of Galilee and miraculously appeared in many locations. The Gospel narrative is understandably hazy about the precise details, but the purpose of these appearances is clear. Jesus is commissioning his followers to take the message to the world beginning in Jerusalem. He does what all great preachers do, and as Luke says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. But that was not all. It was not a case of, OK, teaching's over, go home now. Jesus challenges his followers. He gives them a commission. And this is the point of the Ascension story, not how he left them or whether he went up or down. And yes, it's a pretty futile thing to build a church over the supposed footprints of Jesus on the Mount of Olives. Though I suppose it does provide us with a place to read the story. The point of the story is that we are challenged to proclaim in the name of Jesus repentance and forgiveness of sins to all nations and start where you are. In the disciples' case, of course, that was Jerusalem. And best of all, we shall be clothed with power from God. The Holy Spirit will be given. Fantastic news. God is with us in all things and for all time. So let us pray. 
Gracious God, may we first hear the challenge of the risen Christ, and so challenged may we be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Emboldened with God's love, may we go out into his world and proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in the name of Christ crucified, risen and ascended. God grant the living grace to the departed rest, to all mankind peace and concord, and to us and all his servants life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and rest upon you and all those you love from this day forward and forevermore. Amen.